this thing on. Is it working? I can never tell because it's always a few seconds behind, so I never know if it's actually started correctly or not. Okay, looks like it is on. Oh, and I forgot to change the name of the stream. Let's turn and do that. I can't believe I missed that. Well, I guess we'll just keep on working on the nether highway. Call it good. Okay, let's see now. I know we've been starting in here a lot lately. It's because I've been AFKing. Let me go ahead and show you guys a little bit though. So things are actually moving pretty good. I believe that these are all about filled up completely. So for this last row, we can go ahead and pop those down though. And then on the other side, so that is, how many chests is that? I believe it's like 26 or something, or furnaces. So that's enough to mend like 13, 14 pickaxes. Like diamond pickaxes is pretty easy. This side is all the way done. And I've actually been draining this out. Has it all caught up finally? I had this running in the background while I was watching PewDiePie's live stream. So it looks like it is all done, so let's just take care of that. I just drained them all out, so it's still got the stuff left in here, but I removed the stuff from all the hoppers in the chest, just to make sure that I would be getting full experience once I turned them all back on. PewDiePie's live stream. I'm kind of still in a haze after it. Because he had some crazy stuff going on. No, get down. Parker? Oh, thank you. Just trying to climb on that popcorn tin again. And he fell off of it the other day and told him not to, but... Okay, well, it looks like I need to go get some more... Oh, wait, I have more fuel. Ha 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 ha. This is how professional I am. Anyway. So, PewDiePie livestream. I'll probably be talking about it more once I have a little bit more audience interaction going. But it was kind of crazy. Like the amounts of Lino, he had more flow through his channel and just a couple of the chests. Like, if you multiplied what I have by nine, that was a small amount for him to be opening a chest on. He had one chest that he opened on at 16 million Lino which is quite a bit and I mean I'm pretty sure the highest winner was over 874,000 Lino which is like over $12,000 US kind of crazy like I it kind of blows my mind I mean that much money would make a very drastic difference in my life but anyway, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not quite that lucky. So I, I find it funny that I had forgotten about all the lava here that I could use as a fuel source. I was using extra bamboo. And I used up most of the extra bamboo stores. And now it's already going to start filling back out again. 
just because all of the oh, I can reach through there that's gonna save some time anyway the bamboo hasn't consistently been making it all the way down to the end but it should be able to make it now so at some point during the stream I do need to go pick up a table Oh, hello Ducktendo, and thank you for the donation right off the bat. Holy cow, dude. Yeah, I, I didn't even see you in the stream yet when you donated. So awesome, thank you, thank you. Yeah, did you watch PewDiePie's live stream, Ducktendo? Or are you not into PewDiePie? I was just talking about that a little bit because of how crazy some of that was of what was going on there. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm going to guess that you at least know who PewDiePie is. But anyway, it'd be hard not to know who PewDiePie is if you're on D-Life. Anyway, yeah, he had like one sixteen million dollar Lino chest that he opened up. <laughs> or not sixteen million dollars, sixteen million Lino. Like the chest and one of the people won, like the top one was like eight hundred and seventy four thousand Lino or something like that. Oh. Okay, I do have my wife and I loaned out a table to my brother-in-law and they're going to be bringing that by sometime within the hour so I, I will have to go at that point just to go pick up the table real fast but anyway are you headed back out to Kendo? huh not sure what exactly is going on I can't really like it takes a while to update. Okay, let's see if this is enough for me to get a full 32 lava. We'll just get grabbing some more lava to fill this up. Just using lava as a fuel source is kind of a twofold thing. So you have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, looks like I need to clear one space. I'm not sure if... So the stuff that I'm cooking right now is just some of that extra nether rack and I'll be using it later on so I'm just trying to keep that going and it's also been a little bit of an extra XP source just at smaller amounts generally. Oh my. 
why they have an ad for Arthur on the TV on PBS Kids. Parker enjoys watching PBS Kids. It was kind of, I don't know though. I mean, they had a new Arthur episode. And so I saw it and it was like, Arthur, I love Arthur. You know, like that's one of the best TV shows they had. And then they had an episode where they made Mr. Ratburn gay. And it's like I... I don't know, I have a brother-in-law that's gay, so it's not like I'm homophobic or anything. But it was just like adding that into a kid's show, I just felt like it was a little bit unnecessary. And then they didn't even... Like, they played it safe and they didn't even touch on this topic, really. And it's like, well, if you're going to be bringing that up, then you might as well like help the kids understand it or something at least like I don't know like I'd prefer that at least if they're gonna make a character gay then they at least go over some of the real questions that you would be asking with a relationship like that anyway so I know that I mean my kids like I have a brother-in-law that's getting married the 1st of June to his boyfriend or his... Yeah, anyway. So I know that I'm going to have to talk about that with my kids. Like kind of talk about the whole subject of... You know, like how that's a lifestyle decision and whether or not it's okay. So personally, like I am a religious person. And so, like, I understand that it's a person's choice and stuff, but I don't exactly approve of that decision either, right? So it's like I'm definitely going to love and support my family, and it's not like I'm going to disown them or anything. But it's just kind of differentiating the person from the lifestyle kind of thing. And there's just been other, I don't know, other things that come into that, but kind of a heavier topic to discuss and people's opinions on that are very very differing. It's just one of those things where you're here in hot water anyway that you talk about it it seems so I'm just going to kind of steer away from talking about this too much more. It looks like we at least got that all sleep. It is kind of funny, like, watching kids shows in an, as an adult. And just realizing how little sense some of them make. So there's a lot of shows that they come up with like, um... They come up with like some reasonable explanation or even if it's like science fiction then it's at least... They kind of try and hold true to some of the science and stuff. The worst one for totally disregarding anything like that though is Martha Speaks. I don't know if any one of you guys have seen Martha Speaks, but it is like after, like, because when I was younger, I didn't really pick up on the total ridiculousness of it, you know, like, I just suspended my disbelief really well. Anyway, but yeah, Martha Speaks, it's like their whole reason for why this dog can talk is that she eats some alphabet soup and the letters go to her brain instead of her stomach, which at that point then it's like, okay, well if, but didn't I have a couple of lava buckets on me? Um, okay. Anyway, their whole excuse so for why this dog can talk is that the alphabet soup letters went to her brain instead of her stomach, but it's like, wait a second, like how does, because your esophagus doesn't open up to your brain in any way, 
and pasta in your brain makes it so you can talk like anyway like if you even think about it then it, it just makes no sense at all so kind of weird stuff on my mind today I guess but Oh, now I'm a kind of a weird person. Going through. Oh, holy cow! Thank you, Duck Tendo. Why is it not showing me? Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so I'm. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out a little bit of the D Life stuff because it's not always showing me that you're in the stream, and so I. I don't know. Like, I, I just know that there's kind of a big delay on what it actually ends up showing me. But yeah, thank you for the donations, dude. That's awesome. So, the chest... I don't know if you've seen the new update, but... Like, I can open up that chest after it hits five Lino is all. And be able to give back. I wanted to wait until we got to a hundred so we could get a good idea of how it kind of proportions out what's there. Um, after watching PewDiePie's live stream though it does look like there are like that it gives out different amounts and so it gives out a large amount and then steadily down to the other people. So yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to figure this stream and stuff out still a little bit. While I'm thinking about it now, so I need to go... We're actually going to head through to the spawn castle and go grab some stuff. I need to make sure I don't forget any of this. And I also need to make sure... I was in this stream, but I had no idea there was a huge giveaway, so I left. Oh yeah, there was at one point just randomly like most of the time he was opening it up around like 5,000 Lino or something and so like when he did that then a couple of times I got like one or two and so I'd just give him a few lemons back or whatever but randomly there was just 16 million in the chest and when he did that giveaway then there were people that like, one guy won, like, 874,000 Lino, I believe. Which is, like, that's, like, $12,000. Which is crazy, crazy. And I, that person must have been freaking out super hardcore. 
Like I know I would be if I won that in just a random PewDiePie stream. But anyway. Yeah, I thought at one point that I I might have won something a little bit more. But I I think I I might have just had my eyes like I was imagining things a little bit. Anyway, I, I should have taken a screenshot when it was what it was, but from what I can tell though, everything's instantaneous, and so I, I don't think it is going through if I did get anything. I don't know, there's just some weird stuff though. There was like disappearing donations, so at one point he had like 45,000 Lino and 40,000 just disappeared. Oh, thank you for the ice creams, dude. Yeah, anyway, it was it was an interesting stream. Like, I, I was really wanting to see how that all worked. And it definitely does grow because of the chat and stuff. And, I mean, with PewDiePie, you can imagine he had so much chat going on that it was just generating Lino like crazy. Oh, thank you for more ice cream. Holy cow, dude. Anyway, so where I'm at right now, if you haven't seen this part, this is the new Nether Highway. So, oh, welcome to the stream, Sev, Sev Denur. gifts. <laughs> uh, anyway, so this is another highway that I'm working on. I'll go ahead when I actually get down a little bit further, then I'll be able to show you guys the actual final design of what it's going to look like. I'm getting close and I am on my last rocket, so let's see if we can get there. Okay, well we're close enough. Oh, thank you for the lemons, dude. Anyway, so yesterday on stream, I was playing around, and this is kind of the design that we settled on. Now, it's kind of like a city skyline kind of thing with the green. And just so you guys know, this was random. So to keep it random, instead of just trying to think up of like random numbers and stuff, I had five... Holy cow, dude. Thank you, thank you. Anyway, I had five dice, and so I was just rolling them, and depending on what the number was on the die was how high up I was going. Let's see if these guys want to kill me. I've been having a problem with the, there's some zombie pigment somewhere that's been calling out for them to kill me every time I go walking past. But anyway... So this nether tunnel though, like it's, like I, I need to make a bunch of gray carpet, I need to make some more yellow carpet, and just finish it all the way down as well as collecting a bunch of the smooth stones. So it's going to be kind of a slow burn, but I think at the moment I'm going to go do a little bit of flower collecting near the pyramid because I had a bunch of stone that was cooking off there. So... I did save up a good amount of green concrete, like last night I did a couple of shulkers worth. Because I had to go in, you know, get it all wet and then harvest it up. Let's see, this is just so random. I don't know where all these zombie pigmen are coming from that just hate me, but... It all started with one accidental touch of my pick and they've just hated me since. Anyway. Just got a message that's checking that super fast. So yeah, I'm using the smooth stone just because it's lighter and the nether is just so dark. So over here, I should have some going. Oh, what the heck, dude? Are you kidding me? 
No way. <laughs> Dude, are you are you kidding me? Wow. And are you I swear you're going to kill me, Ducktendo. Like you're going to like give me a heart attack or something cuz you keep on donating so much. Um, well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Holy cow. Um, I, I just totally lost my train of thought of what I was even going to do because of that. Let's... Okay, I, I, I kind of think that I'm, I'm remembering a little bit. Holy crap, dude, though. Like, seriously, holy crap. Um... So I, I needed to grab some more stone to take back to the other area. Dude, I'm not going to be able to focus anymore. Holy cow. Um, see, I'm not like PewDiePie just rolling in. <laughs> I'm just rolling in the money to just be able to brush off. Like I think it's funny with PewDiePie's stream because he was getting like big donations like that and he wasn't even mentioning them in the chat like it was just but there were a ton of them coming in but anyway um so the stone because I have so much more fuel over at the other base I'm going to be taking some shulkers back with me just to cook up for later because I have I don't even know how many double chests of stone I have here I still got five double chests there plus the other side another five plus five more double chests so like yeah, I have plenty plenty plus stuff at the spawn castle as well oh boy and now I still have more things I need to do I need to go into the nether too because somehow I misplaced like 15 shulkers and so with the crazy amount of shulkers that I have, I'm still kind of low, although I do have some in here it looks like that are, I have about eight in that, so I'll use some of those. And where's my rockets? Here we go. Well, thank you, thank you again, dude. I mean, I don't know, you're seriously blowing my mind is what you're doing. Okay, so I need to get some more wool for the carpet. This place is just like, this is my oldest base and I've done so much clearing here that that's why I have all those resources is it's just like my, my main storage area with all my stuff. So I'm going to grab out, let's do all eight of them with wool. I might just, maybe I should even turn on my mob farm real fast just while I'm here because I've been cleaning it out a little bit lately. Let's go do that. I don't know if I've showed you guys the top of this thing, but there's just a simple little hopper clock up here. And as soon as I put something in it, then it will start. So let's just put in half of these. We'll call it good. It's on about a 12 to 13 second timer, like it goes around the dispenser observer chain is right here. And so basically there's just observers and dispensers all the way up that just like detect the signal and the water streams and everything to turn it on and off. And then when we get down in here you should see yep, some mobs dropping. So we'll just leave that running for the moment while I keep on gathering up some more string here. I've been going through a lot of the string, but I mean I have those three other sections still, so it's not like I'm going to be hurting for it at all. Cow <laughs> 
and Nintendo years just stop so This is such an expensive way to get wool, but it works for me, right? So. You know what guys, I was thinking about going to do Instacart today, but then I kind of also wanted to see PewDiePie's stream and stuff, and it looks like I'm actually doing better today than I would have with Instacart, which is really, really funny. But Instacart, I don't know if you guys have heard of Instacart. It's um. It's kind of like a Uber for food, except now Uber does have a food thing that they they have as well in their service now. But anyway, so I've had some friends that did it in the past and they were able to at least make their rent and stuff. And so I thought that it would be worth it just to give it a try, right? try and help out since I am the stay-at-home dad right now like that was one of the few things that I could think of that I could maybe do with my son you know like it's not too hard to take him along a little bit of a shopping trip like we do that all the time already so anyway I tried for multiple days though and like wasn't getting anything at all so I mean that's kind of what led me to just not even worry about I don't know I honestly think I'm just going to look for a legitimate job you know even if it's not the most pleasant like I have been thinking about like UPS just because I've heard that they help with tuition for college so I might look into that and it's also one of the few jobs that it's from like 3 to 8 in the morning I believe if you do the packaging whatever stuff and so that would be one of the times that would not conflict with my wife's work and that I could still watch Parker during the day so it's I don't know one of those things I guess anyway I'm going to try and keep on changing it up. Maybe after we do a little bit more wool, then we'll just head over to the flower farm. Go do a little bit of that. The flower farm is actually the only thing that I've been able to kill. Oh, just a second. That's kind of a frequent thing with a little boy. He was playing around on my jacket and he slid off the couch on it. <laughs> and landed on his knees. Uh, I don't know, there's just a certain point like I could be a crazy helicopter parent. But at the same time, like if I constantly protect him, then he's never going to learn either, right? So... It's just one of those kind of sad things as a parent because it's like I feel bad when he hurts himself like that. But at the same time, like, because I haven't been cuddling him, then at least he doesn't make a huge deal out of it. And then he decides that he's actually okay and, you know, moves on. Oh, it is my niece's birthday tomorrow. I have 
have such a large family now that it seems like there's always someone's birthday like every week. So like I am one of five, I'm the fourth out of five children in my family. And my wife is number two out of six. And so that's already, you know, like 11 kids, it's already a pretty big amount between just our siblings. But then a couple of years ago, my mom died. And so my dad has since remarried. And the lady that he remarried has three kids. And my wife, her parents divorced and both remarried. And one had two kids, like her mom's husband had two kids. Her dad's wife has like four or five. Anyway, so if you then go to just the straight, like step siblings at that point, then we're like already over 20 something people. And that doesn't even involve any of the people with kids. So, I mean, at least none of them are ones that I grew up with. So I'm, it's not like I'm close to any of the step-siblings or my wife's step-siblings. I guess my wife is kind of in a different boat because one of her... Kind of random, but her best friend growing up, it was her best friend's dad that married her mom. And so they knew each other for years and years and years before their parents ever got together. Anyway. Yeah, so because of all that though, then it does seem like there's always someone's birthday and you just can't even keep up with all of them. Seems like that's also pretty typical anymore, though. I don't know that there's divorces and having kids with their new spouses, or that the spouse already had kids, or... So... Um... Last night, when I was doing some of the grindy kind of stuff, like making concrete and like just working a little bit more on that tunnel, then I had one of the followers, it's a pretty consistent crew, Poggin, had recommended something called the Discworld series, which I don't know if you guys have heard of Discworld, it's like 42 books, but apparently... I don't know why I hadn't heard of it, you know, with how big it is apparently, but sorry, I'm, I'm saying apparently a lot. I'm going to turn into that apparently kid that was on Ellen forever ago. Anyway, so this is just something that I totally missed, but I started listening to the audio just a little bit last night, and it's actually, it's a fairly interesting series. I don't know what to think about it though because it's like I just don't really understand the direction that it's headed like a lot of books then they have that basic hero story right so you have the person there's some kind of conflict and that they're going to try and solve that and with the disc world I mean so far maybe it gets to where it has more of a story like that but as far as I can tell, like, I haven't been able to find, like, any kind of serious conflict that's actually going on. So, I mean, there's, there's still plenty of conflict. Like, there's a city that burns down, and, like, assassination attempts and stuff. But it's just, it, it doesn't seem like there's an overall, I don't know, I, I guess I... It might be going over my head, or I might just not have gotten far enough to actually understand where it's all trying to go. But it does have some interesting stuff about, like, it kind of goes into the, I believe, Hindu or Chinese myths about, like, the world turtle and stuff. 
and just the, the that's why it's, I think that's why it's called this world, right? It's because it's a flat earth on top of four elephants or on top of a giant turtle flying through the cosmos. Now it's been a while since I've listened to a book series like this, so. I did, I was talking about yesterday a little bit. I, if you guys have heard of Aragon, I used to be really, really into that series. And it's like the first book I read like eight times, the second book like seven times. For similar, the third book I read four times, I think. Because I was just reading through them and I really, really enjoyed them. And I really liked where everything was going. And then the fourth book, the final book in the series, it was like a total... I don't know, like, I, I felt like it was a satisfactory ending when I first read it, but then the more that I thought about it, then it just kind of, over time, was more and more unsettling, like, the, it just didn't actually feel like it was the right ending for that book. So I don't, I don't know how else I could ex excuse me, I don't know how else I could explain that other than that at a certain point I felt like it just didn't match up with the, the character's character. And so if you guys have heard about that, there were some other big things that were totally missed that kind of bothered me as well that seemed like that he was setting up something and then just totally forgot about it in the last book that he'd been setting up this thing for the entire series. Which, so the original Harry Potter books, I mean, J.K. Rowling, she's kind of gone off the deep end recently. But the original books, when you got to the whole Horcruxes part, I, there shouldn't be any spoilers here, right, guys? Just because of... I don't know, because of how long it's been out, the movies and everything. But anyway, so there's the Horcruxes. And in the end, like, when that all pays off, and all of a sudden you're like, holy cow, like... The diary was the Horcrux, and like there were hints at the end story that you could not have gotten until you finally got that end story, right? And so, like, I thought that was absolutely brilliant writing. And since then, then she's gone like all SJW weird kind of crap going on, but. I don't know, like hearing about like Black Hermione or Black Hagrid when she describes them as being white in the books is a little bit like, okay, you're trying to be a little bit of a tryhard now, but anyway, so I kind of feel like that was, oh, hello there, group hugging. But yeah, so in some book series though, like I do feel like the original Harry Potter series, there was a pretty good payoff. Other series though, I just don't know. Oh, welcome to the string group of Hagen. I was just telling these guys that I was listening to that series that you told me about the Discworld. I'm in. I'm, I'm not sure what chapter I'm in. I'm, I'm about a third of the way through the first book now though. I was just talking about how I wasn't exactly sure where everything was going with it. That's funny. I have... So I try and monitor... Oh, you can't hear very well? Oh, poop. Is there something going on with my audio? Let's see. So it looks like it's... No, it looks like it should be reaching pretty well. Actually, it might be a little bit loud according to that because I'm getting into the red. Although it does look like my stream is being a little bit funky for some reason. Okay. Okay, okay. I'm really hoping it was your mobile phone there. 
So anyway, I was just telling them about how I had been listening to that Discworld a little bit. I do need to go grab some more bone meal real fast. So I'm just trying to gather up some more resources for this entire build. Did I have extra dandelion? I did, so I don't really need to focus on getting dandelions. It's just going to be the light gray dye. And... Bones are over here. Okay, I'm glad that that's better for you, Groove Hogan. Yeah, so it's been kind of a crazy day so far. I'll put the music down. Yes. Yeah, I've been trying to get to where I can find the right level for it, so if it's a bit loud, then let me know if that's better for the music. I'm just... I'm just trying to get everything to a level that works. I had it a little bit higher because I noticed on some of the streams that I had gotten going that it wasn't working super well. Oh, thank you for the follow there, Netnoot. Okay, that's good. So this is a flower farm for anyone that may or may not have seen it before. You're literally just using... Oh, thank you for the donation there, Netnoot. Um, what has been happening? So I guess overall today... I decided not to go try and do the Instacart stuff, and it looks like that was actually a pretty good decision. I watched PewDiePie's live stream. I don't know if you guys watched PewDiePie's live stream, it was actually pretty insane. He had a 16 million Lino chest that he opened. And yeah, the highest person, I, I don't remember the exact number, but I believe it was around 874,000 Lino that the person got. Which was absolutely insane. Anyway. And then so far in Minecraft. Like I did some work last night on the nether tunnel. I saw that the chest is a fail. He opened it by accident at 1000. I'm not so sure if it was at that small of an amount, because it seemed to me like he was opening it at like four or five thousand most of the time. And then there was that really, really big one, but it was just like 16 million came out of nowhere. So yeah, we'll go ahead. Maybe, how many people do we have watching right now? So I was wanting to wait for it to get up to 100 before I open, just so we can see how many like how many Lino people actually get. But yeah, at least it did seem like it was inconsistent with the amount that went to each person. Instead of being... I don't know, I'm still kind of undecided overall though on how that chest works, if I liked it better the original way. Because it's like it gives you the chance when watching a larger streamer like that to get more at the same time then it it's not as consistent about actually benefiting you when it's in like every other circumstance because I mean small streamers like it's gonna take me a while to hit a hundred even right so that's a goal that I want to hit but I kind of feel like my mouth has been a little bit weird so I got a, I basically got a new tooth yesterday. I had a, a crown put on, um, and so my mouth, it's like I'm still trying to get used to it a little bit because for a while there, I had like a temporary one. I don't know if this makes any sense to you guys, but basically I had a tooth that out of nowhere, like it hadn't been painful, like I, I mean normally you can kind of feel when your tooth is getting sensitive that there's a cavity forming. I had nothing of the sort and so all of a sudden 
like one day my tooth just cracked and it was like I needed a root canal and stuff which was not as miserable as I've heard people say it was much more miserable before the root canal the root canal was actually kind of a big relief once I got that fixed but anyway so then I had a temporary one for like a month because they messed it up the first couple of tries and so now I have the the new one on finally the permanent one but it's like the temporary one was like all super rough and stuff and so now it's weird having a smooth tooth there again because you know after a couple months and I kind of got used to it Was it the cornflower that gives you a jump boost? I believe it is, right? Here, let's do a little bit more and then let's maybe go make a little bit of suspicious stew. And test out that cornflower because I think it might be the cornflower that gives you a jump boost effect. And I don't know for how long, but that might be kind of fun to play around with. The one disappointing thing with Dis or the suspicious stew for me though is that it's not stackable and yeah I was really hoping that it would be stackable so I could actually use it as a good food source but I don't know why it's not though it's like I mean you can craft it in large quantities like any other food item so it's like why not make it stackable I don't get what's so difficult about that you know or saddles as well like saddles or something that I feel like they could make stackable even if it was like a bucket where it's only in 16 or something you know but having them not be stackable is just a weird thing to me especially with how many you can get right anyway oh thank you for the ice cream there Groovehagen So yeah, now as far as the listening to the book, the Discworld one, I do have kind of some mixed feelings about it, like I was saying a little bit earlier. But it has been very interesting, like I found it hard to to want to turn it off, because even though like I wasn't really understanding the direction that it's trying to go, like it... I don't know, I kind of mentioned this before, but most books it's like the hero's journey and you can kind of follow where, like there's some goal in the end, right? But anyway, I wasn't quite getting that as much with Discworld, like I don't know where exactly everything's headed. But, that said, like it was a very interesting book just with as random as stuff as was going on all the time. And their characters are really well written. I did like the characters in it. I felt like they were actually a little more true to their character than... I don't know, occasionally books then you have people just do unexpected things completely. Yes, I should be able to register as partner. I looked into that a little bit more this morning. And it looks like I need to also get up to 200 followers. So... The Lino, though, that part I will be able to lock that in. And I just gotta keep on streaming so I can get these followers now. Yeah, so if you have any friends, then... <laughs> I don't know, I feel like Minecraft is kind of one of those niche things. And I wish that people could see some of the stuff but the amount of work that goes into just some of the builds behind the scenes it's just a lot of work to be putting in um how many followers i believe i'm at around 30 or 31 because i i think i had met newt followed in the stream did i have any others i don't think so i think it's just been net newt that's followed today so far at least Anyway, um, yeah, if people knew about the castle, I feel like the hard thing though, is it's like the build up to the castle, because when you get a big build like that done, 
it's awesome and everyone that sees it seems to really like that like that's probably the best video that I have on YouTube as far as people's watch time that they're clicking on it and actually watching most of the way through that video but I feel like it's kind of hard to get people that are actually interested in the building process as well and so it's like I can do well with a video where it's like I've put in 500 hours behind the scenes for a like 18 minute video or whatever it is you know but I don't know it is kind of a little bit harder to find those people that are actually interested in all the resource making and the design process and you know everything else that goes along with that oh looks like Parker wants to eat a little bit he had some cereal earlier but it's been a couple hours so I might get him set up with some lunch real fast what I can do though Actually, maybe I... I don't know, I was going to say I could set it up real fast to just AFK for a moment and do this, but I think that's probably actually a bad decision, so I'm just going to hurry and get him some food real fast. Okay, I'm back now. Sorry about any delays there. Make videos of great structures that have dynamite in specific places and then blow them. Oh boy. I guess now that the dynamite wouldn't be destroying the materials, then that could be something I could do. Yeah. If you know any more people like you, Groove Hagen, then send them my way. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope that we can get up to the 200 as well. I think that's one of the things that's just going to be over time. Anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know if I even talked about that very much, and he might not be in the stream anymore, but Ducktendo went crazy with the donations today. your nine-year-old followers <laughs> I, I don't think my voice is quite high-pitched enough or like I sounds like I've drinking enough energy drinks to get a ton of nine-year-olds at least at this point I mean in person so funny thing with that is is I have so my wife used to do a lot of babysitting and so when we first got married, and when Parker was little, and I don't know, just kind of different circumstances a couple of years ago, then there were people that occasionally they'd go out of town and they would ask us to house sit and babysit their kids, right? And so it's like then you have a married couple, and so when you have some of the older kids that are like teenage boys and I could deal with them, but then you at least have two parents there or whatever, you know. Or, well, two babysitters there that are parents, but... So with that, one of those days I ended up playing Minecraft with the kids. And they had a lot of fun. And it was just such a funny thing, though, that I could play Minecraft with the... Mm -hmm. It is going really well. I, I will say that. I've had some really good people that have been joining the streams and stuff, so I'm really thankful for that much. Anyway, yeah, so I, I did have some nine-year-olds and stuff that I think one was 12, one was nine, and then the 
girl was seven. And so I played Minecraft with the boys and that was, as far as babysitting is concerned, like that was like some of the easiest stuff ever, you know, like just play Minecraft on my mobile with them and just build a little base and stuff and they were just all crazy into it. Just enjoy, have fun, and you'll keep finding people to have fun on the stream. Yeah, that's very true there, Groovehagen. It also takes a little bit different of a person to want to watch someone when I have to take little breaks to take care of my son. Although, I mean, other streamers that I've seen, they either stream for like an hour and then are done with it. You know, so it's like they stream an amount of time that is reasonable to not have to take a break in. Or some of the people that I've seen that do slightly longer streams than they do end up like having to go to the bathroom for a few minutes or something, so. I don't know, that's one of the things about streaming is like when you make a video, you can edit out all the boring stuff. You can speed it up, you can add transitions or music and specific intervals and stuff but streaming it's like a whole different ball game ball game and i kind of like streaming more because of that like having the interaction and stuff <laughs> more 40 year olds yeah i i'm i'd be happy with anyone but no, so streaming is a little bit more enjoyable on that part though, that you do get the interaction. And, I mean, it's like if I'm going to be gaming, then... <laughs> yeah, all the, all the dudes with babies. I feel like there's plenty of people... Mm-hmm, you have an understand Parker. Anyway, so I feel like there's plenty of people that are interested in Minecraft and stuff, but yeah, as far as people that are interested in Minecraft and have children, that kind of narrows it down a little bit. Um, okay, I'm trying to think of how much more. So I did four shulkers of, of wool, and I may need to do four shulkers of dye. I just might have to take a little break here because I'm starting to lag down the server with all of this grass making. Oh my, this is getting painful, holy cow. Okay, let's finish this out and then we'll take a little break for a moment and do something else. I might... So I know that it's working on the nether highway but one thing that I was running low on was more shulker boxes because of like the 15 that I just totally misplaced. Did I not turn it off? There we go. Anyway, so I might even hop into the end for a little bit since I'm here at the pyramid and go get a few more shulker shells. Maybe we should do that for a moment because I have that's not even a full chest of dye yet. Or maybe can I make dye some other way more efficiently? Hmm. Here, let's maybe see if ink sacks will still work to make stuff. Anyway, I do think it would be fun to go hop in the end for a little bit though, just to go grab some more shulkers. And I haven't done that on stream yet, so it's a fun place to go. Let's check something super fast though. So I'm going to go ahead and put these back down. And let's just make all this into light gray dye. If I can make the dye some other way, then that might be just a more efficient way of doing things. Oh, my table is here. Just a minute.
Okay. The table's not here. It's just he's on his way, so he'll be five or ten minutes out. So what happened, I guess to kind of explain that, is my wife and I had a table that we weren't using because of our tiny apartment. And oh, you cannot use ink. Can you use... Here, let's see if you can even use bone mill. Because they changed the whole dye thingy. And so I may not even be able to use bone mill to dye things white anymore. Let's just see. Yeah, so that doesn't work anymore. So bone mill is just bone mill then. Okay, so Lily of the Valley is the new white color. And Wither Rose is the black color. I would have to set up a Wither Rose farm, which is extremely difficult. Yeah, I think this is actually my best option is to just keep on doing what I'm doing at the moment. Oh shoot, that's... Yeah, just because of how hard to obtain black dye is now with the Wither Roses. I don't know if you've seen that, but you now have to... To get a Wither Rose, a living entity has to die by the Wither. And to get the Wither to kill something is actually kind of difficult. Um, okay, I'm going to be smart about what I'm doing here and bring some extra rockets. I have my bow. I need to get some extra dirt. So whenever I go into the end, there's times that I forget stuff, and when you forget to bring some extra stuff like this, it can get really painful. It's probably actually more than enough dirt. And I should also bring some extra food, just so I don't have to take any time out. And... Well, I do have my new armor, so this should be a lot better armor. Do I have projectile protection? Let me hurry and see if I have some projectile protection books somewhere over here. Um, armor, here we go. Because if I have some projectile protection, then that might make it so I can just destroy him like crazy, and then I won't have to have the chance of dying. Projectile. Did they do away with projectile protection? Isn't that a thing? I mean, I don't always keep it right here, but... Holy Batman, what are you saying? Oh, show the armor again? So this, I guess you might have missed that. So with the new update, they made it so you could put multiple protections on armor. And so if I can get projectile protection, if... Is that a thing? I, I feel like there should be a projectile protection book. Am I just making something up? Projectile protection. Yeah, it's totally a thing. Oh, they haven't even updated it. So, in the Minecraft wiki, it says that they're mutually exclusive with protection, fire protection, and blast protection, if you have projectile protection. But then, I mean, I have them because they totally made it to where you can have, like, I basically heard people call it god-tier armor for Minecraft because of how crazy it is. I just don't know if I have any projectile protection books, though. And I thought I should have had some somewhere, especially here, but maybe not. I'm full of these books still. Looks like I've used quite a few of these books. The other problem is that I might have... Okay, well, I, I really want to try and get projectile protection if I can on this armor because that would make it 
way easier to take on the shulkers because you get a bunch of shulkers shooting their projectiles at you and it really slows things down now let's go check one other place because I have a pretty large store of books here in Cloud City as well Protection. Okay, this should have some projectile protection in here somewhere. There's got to be projectile protection. Or is it just not something that I have anymore? Is it something that just died out? Like, oh, there we go. Finally. Holy cow, that took a long time to find that one book. Okay, I was about to go crazy thinking that they did away with that book because it's like... I had no idea where it was at. I, I don't know why I don't have more of these though. actually have one other area other than this that I could go look for books in, but it's all the way back by the spawn castle. And so I'm trying not to go super far away. Projectile. If I had just three or two more, then I could be done. So let's just hope that I can find a couple more projectile protection somewhere. Did they just make it super rare or something? Is that what's going on here? Because they have all kinds of fire protection, blast protection, and normal protection, like... Is this all the way up here now? In this okay. I'm sorry about the slowdown here. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that I have things all the way ready. And if I can have that going, then it's really going to make a big difference. That is a crazy strong book. Looks like I need to just start conserving like anything that has projectile protection on it. Because I didn't realize that that was such a rare book. For a second, oh, the mending was on the bow. So, just so you get an idea of the time spent to get it up to this level, um. To get a double chest of items, it can take a couple of hours, I feel like. Oh, thank you for the donation there, Tetanus. Welcome, welcome. I was just about to go to the end to go grab some more shulkers real fast. You know, go kill some shulkers to get the shulker shells. And I was just trying to make my armor as crazy strong as possible. I don't know if you've seen, but in the new update, they made it so you can put all the different kinds of protection on the same armor. And so... Oh, thank you for the ice cream donations. Holy cow, tetanus. Anyway, so I'm trying to find some more projectile protection books to put on these... to put on my armor here. Okay, well, I think I may have to go check the spawn castle because I'm just not seeing any projectile protection here. But if there's one other place to look, then it would be over there. Okay, yeah, let's just head on over. Oh, you know what? I should probably fly during the daytime just to make it so you can see things a little better. 
We'll go ahead and take off from Cloud City and just fly directly there. Instead of going through the nether, even though it's not that bad in the nether to make that distance. I do like the fact though that on the new server then everything loads up reasonably fast, even when I am flying. See, I'm not hitting the invisible wall, I don't think. It's just being kind of slow. Not crazy slow. Okay, we'll go past White Ox Place. It should also speed up here once I get away from that base, just because that place is like central still. So how are you doing tetanus? Did you manage to watch PewDiePie's live stream today? I've been talking about that because it was kind of a crazy live stream. Anyway, if you haven't seen that, that's the spawn castle there. With all the farms and the city up in here. You know what, if I... If I had a better way to sort out which librarian did what, I'd maybe even be able to just get a librarian that had projectile protection. Oh, okay, looks like my table is outside, so I need to go for just a couple minutes to go pick up my table, and then I'll be right back.
Okay. I am back now. Sorry about that little delay there. We just had to carry the table upstairs. We live on the second floor. I mean, my brother-in-law was just bringing that by to drop it off. So projectile protection, let's see if we can find... We only need two more. Um, Parker's got his favorite uncle here. Oh, thank you for the donations there, Groovehagen. Okay, I'm gonna try and be fast. I feel bad about having to take a little pause like that, but can't really put a pause on life, right? So. I seriously would have thought that it would have been here somewhere already. With all the books that I have. If it's not here, in one of these chests, there's one last possible place that it could be. And if it's not there, then it's just not on the server. Which is amazing with all the books that we have that... We can't find one projectile protection book. Or even two of them, right? We might have to get an AFK fish farm set up again. And just let it go full time so I can try and get a couple of these books or get my villager trading area set up or something. Um. The funny thing is, is I didn't really value them before because of out of all the protections, that wasn't the one that I really cared about. So I normally use fire protection or normal protection and blast protection occasionally. So it wasn't, it was like the least used one, but apparently now it's the one that I actually want for the moment and it's just not here. I wonder if it's not on the list or something. It must just have a super, super low chance of being there. Is it there some stuff here? Okay, well maybe I... I don't know, I guess I can check that one last place. Because I got some really, really old books here, like some of the original ones. Is Mark about to head out? Okay, well, thanks for stopping by, Mark. Okay, yep. say bye bye. Okay, do you want to go back to eating now, bud? Oh no, you want to. Of course. He sees the table on the coffee table and he wants to climb on it. You should have known. I gotta take it apart a little bit. It has four bolts that I need to take off to get the legs off so I can put it back in storage. Did you just donate more lemons? Maybe not. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. Fire protection, blast protection, all kinds of stuff except for projectile protection again. Oh wait, was that it? There's one. I'm like trying to skim through it to not take too long, but I'm hoping that I didn't miss something somewhere. Okay, well with two of them, 
and it does look like it has a pretty good holy cow Parker we had to climb it show it who was the baby boss do I have my yeah it's on okay I just haven't seen anything for a minute in the chat so I'm not sure if you're still there Groovehagen Okay, um, over here I wouldn't have anything to have anything in this little chest. Possibly. Okay, well, I got one more in that location. So let's go check the final, final location. Because I might have just a couple of books over here. Oh, wait. Those are my shulkers. I finally found them. I can't believe they were here at the Guardian Farm of all places. I I did not even remember being here. Okay, well that is Okay, I need you to help me remember this Groovehagen. Shulkers are at the Guardian Farm, okay? I still want to go to the end. And we'll go get some more stuff, but just remember that we have like, what was that, 17 or something there? I'm just curious to see if I can even put more enchantments on these. I can? Holy cow. That is the most overpowered helmet possible. And also the most overpowered boots. Oh, I oh, it's going away. What the heck? Oh, I hate that. I always feel like when a sneeze goes away, then it's just going to come back with a vengeance. Okay, everything's repaired there. Okay, well, we will have to stop back by here. A little bit later. I'm gonna just grab these and take them with me though back to the main the main base. Holy cow, I can't believe we finally found those. I knew that I had a bunch somewhere, I just couldn't remember where. Can I explain you my gear? There are new things. So I guess, yeah, I could go over over each one of the possible things there. And these guys still hate me. Here, I'm trying to make it into another, or out of another. Yeah, I can go ahead and I'll go over some of the stuff here. It does look like the stream is lagging. That's weird. I'm just going to try and restart that to get it going a little bit better. Okay, well that's at least closer. So many puppies. Okay, well first off, the shulkers. This is the chest where I used to store most of my shulkers, so I'm going to go ahead and just store those back. Um, as far as gear, Aqua Affinity makes it so that you can mine faster underwater, I believe. Or maybe I should verify that real quick. Yeah, so it says normally when a player's head is underwater, mining blocks six five times as long as mining while out of water. Wearing armor with aqua affinity causes penalty to be ignored. So basically that just makes it so you can mine at a normal speed underwater. Mending repairs it if you get experience. Respiration makes it so you can breathe for longer underwater. The different kind of protections are just, like so protection is just protection in general. Fire protection is against like fire attacks or lava. Blast is against like creeper stuff. Projectile is against like the shulker projectiles or arrows. And then unbreaking just keeps it from breaking. 
Um, and then you can also get thorns. I only have thorns one on, but you can go all the way up to thorns three. And that basically means that when they attack you, they take damage even if you don't hit them. Feather falling makes it so that you can survive a drop from further up. And yeah, that should be just about everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and just go hop into the nether for a little bit then. Um, trying to think of if there's anything else that I need. I might as well grab another, another rocket or two. And I think I'll actually go ahead since I got a couple of shulkers. Like I found some of those and I'll take like three of them with me and we'll call that good. The entrance is actually down under here. So we'll pop into the end here. The end portal, the eye enders that are rounded in the slots you can make with, is it blaze powder and ender pearls? I forgot ender pearls. Okay, well we can collect some of those real fast. I believe anyway, when you throw that up, it will go in the direction of the end portal. And so you can locate the end portal that way. It takes a while. And so I, I didn't do that on stream just because it's like just a bunch of walking through the wilderness. And then eventually you get over to the point where it's basically over the top of the portal. And then I usually just dig straight down and try and find it. And so that's why the ladder is, is there basically. Um, it was because that's where I dug down originally. And I wasn't right on it, but actually got lucky and got to where I at least hit the room. Because that could have taken so long. Like I've had other ones where I thought that I was close and then it ended up taking, I don't know, like a couple hours still exploring the thing to even find that room. Anyway, um, I should make sure that I can see the chat. The wings take an armor spot, right? Yes, they do. So they replace your chest piece. So technically, I would be more durable if I had a chest piece because then I could get all the protections on that and stuff as well. And elytra don't allow that. However, um, it's just so much more useful for me to fly and where they made it so you could kind of overpower the armor. And it's not as big of a deal. Okay. So I need to just go find a random direction to head in. So how about... Positive in the Z-axis? Let's do it. So I'm just going to start flying. When I am over the void, if I can't see any islands, and I'll keep that on to make sure that I don't fly too low because if you fly into the void it's just all gone and I really don't want to lose my armor that would really stink like these the armor that I have on me now probably has hundreds and hundreds of levels into it as well as some very expensive difficult to find books so yeah I don't, have you seen the end before here, Groovehagen? I feel like it's something that a surprising number of Minecraft players have not been to or seen. Okay, we'll see if there's an end city somewhere and I'll go ahead and start looting it. So the end dimension is where the endermen come from. I don't know how all that works, but when they teleport, then they, they can teleport here. I saw it the first time here. Okay. So I probably should have showed you where the dragon is a little bit. Maybe we could do a dragon fight sometime. Okay. There's a portal, but no end city. So there are these portals every so often. If you take one of those, that will take you back to the center. Oh, and here's an end city. Hopefully it's not one that I've previously looted. We should, oh, okay. Looks like it is unlooted because there's a shulker there. It's not a big one and it does not have one of the flying ships where you would find Elytra. 
but I came here mostly for the shulkers. I'm just trying to be careful not to look at any of the endermen though, because I don't want to make this harder than it already is. Is the entrance hidden? That's an interesting way to spawn that in. Oh, maybe, maybe I have been here before because it, it loaded in super funky too. Here, let's see. If I get in here and there's a large amount of shulkers, then I haven't been here. If there's like, oh nope. Okay, looks like it was just a weird spawn. Okay. So this is the pain in the butt room. Like, I, I really don't like these rooms in this place. But it looks like I am not taking very much damage, which is awesome. I kind of wanted to test that out because of the whole new armor situation there. Normally, with the amount of damage that I'm taking, I would have been dead already, basically. So the fact that I'm able to just float around and just do damage to him, it's really going to make this a lot easier of an experience, at least. I've got another one over here. Now, shulker shells, they are not a guaranteed drop, as far as I know. And there are some people that use mod packs to make them put out two shulker shells for every shulker instead of just one. Ooh, look at that, all the free golden diamonds. I will gladly take all of this. Efficiency 3 and breaking, that's where all my random shovels come from that are silver with enchantments, just so you know. Um, okay. I'm gonna hurry and pick all these up before they disappear. Okay. Looks like I might have got all of those. So now the whole reason for the dirt. Is so that I can do that. Are there any more shells anywhere? I guess not. I got five. That's you need two per shulker sh or shulker box. So a shulker chest. Would this go better if I use my sword? Maybe. Okay, well, I think that was pretty much everything here. This was a tiny, tiny end city. No shulker shells down here. Okay, and am I headed in the right direction? I usually just pick a direction. And just try and... Oh, excuse me. And just try and head in that direction. So... The end cities are usually on bigger of these islands. So I'm just trying to see if I find a big enough island, if I can find a good sized end city. Because really, I, I want to show you, if you haven't seen this, what the ships look like of where you get Elytra. Because they are just awesome. It kind of reminds me of Peter Pan when they have the flying ship at the end of the movie. Up oh, here we go, here's one. No flying ship. You're not getting very lucky. Okay. Okay, there's usually a couple of shulkers guarding the entrance. There should be a yep, right there. Yeah, so I would recommend if you do come to the end that you do it with good armor because otherwise like when you die here if you don't have backup elytra or anything then you are just done or if you don't take down your coordinates of where you died which probably isn't going to happen then that can be very dangerous as well and so usually when I come here I, I try and just keep an ender chest on me and put stuff away as I go, and then if I lose my gear, then at least I saved some of the loot. But it can be really, really disappointing if you do die here in the end. 
like I've had a couple of times where I just wasn't even able to find the gear that I dropped and that's pretty, pretty defeating when you're like thousands of blocks away and you just lose everything. Okay, there's always one up top here. He's So you can't shoot them with a bow unless they're open. And so you just kind of got to bide your time. You can hit him with a sword though. My, okay, I'm done floating, that's good. And you do a lot of, um, a lot of parkour when you're trying to gather shulkers, it seems. I'm hoping that I get more drops if I just use my sword more consistently. Up one over there. And then a lot of the ender chests that I have are actually free ones from um, towns like this, some of the end cities. Did those, neither one of those dropped a shell, I don't think. Kind of sinks, but we do have the one shell down there once it stopped floating. Okay, well, let's just work our way down. So normally I just go through these on the side here because then you can just walk around. Wow, a lot of gold today. Holy cow. Normally I find other gear in there. Oh, uh, I didn't bring my axe. It's going to be just a little bit slower, but that's okay. How many spaces did I have? I had one. So let's just go ahead and we'll just take this and keep on going for a little bit here. Once I get to a certain point, I'm going to put it away for sure, but at the moment... Oh shoot. Okay, maybe I should actually just place one right here then. Okay, there's going to be a big room up above us with a ton more shulkers, so this should be a good place to go. Holy cow, I'm getting just a little bit of lag right now. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how many times I've died in these rooms. Like probably just on the server, like six or eight times at least. So the whole, like, having this awesome armor is just making it feel unreal. Fire protection for it? Look at that. That is a great pickaxe to start out with. Like, it's already got mending on it, so I just put on efficiency 5, and silk touch or fortune, whichever one I want, and boom. Like, I, I love when I find mending equipment in these places so much better than having to find an actual menu book and do it yourself. Okay. Yeah, so one of the best places to find gear, like it's a high risk, but you get really high rewards in places like this. I'm going to go ahead and take the chest too, because why not, right? It's a free chest. And I usually check on the roof for shulker. Was this the entire place already? Holy cow, it was. I have collected the banners from these places before. I've not done that this stream. But you know, let's use the shovel that I picked up. So I'm probably not going to use it otherwise, so I might as well just use it to dig out my dirt. Make sure nothing else slipped down. Okay, let's go ahead and head on to the next city then. Eventually, I'll find a big city somewhere here. And you'll get a really good idea of just how much loot you can get out of some of these places. Because those two were, like, literally some of the smallest ones I've ever been to. As far as Zen cities are concerned. How are my wings doing? My wings are good. 
That's another thing that I try and monitor is just that I don't let my elytra get too low. Because if those break then you just fall right out of the air and into the void and you've lost everything and there's no chance. Oh, this one's got a ship. It's not a big one, but it has a ship and that is good enough. Awesome. Okay, so a couple of things to pay attention to in ships. I always go out and get the dragon head. I didn't know about that. Oh no. Did I not have a space for it? Oh, the stupid. I... Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, I, I lost a dragon head, but you don't want to do what I just did there. There's a free potion brewing station with some instant health potions. It looks like I need to just put some stuff away is what I need to do. Holy poop. I can't believe I, I literally just did that. Like, how bad do you have to be to just waste a dragon head like that? Like, that was a completely unnecessary thing to do. Like, there's no reason that should have happened. Anyway, so the instant health potions, those are really good. Like, they're, I don't think they're the highest that you can go, but they are useful in certain situations, especially here. And then this is the really important stuff, is in this room. So there's usually some diamond gear. And the elytra right here. I take the item frame as well. Fix the inventory. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and, and do that now. So now that I have this stuff stored away, maybe I'll put the extra food in there and the extra ender chest as well. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here now just to keep it stored away. And that way if I die then I at least have some of that stuff left, right? Anyway, we'll go ahead and do that. And I can't believe I just totally wasted that dragon head. I also can't believe how many burps I have. I don't... Oh no! Oh! Oh no! Server lag! would have been bad because I was over the void so if I would have just fallen I I would have lost everything and that would have been the server's fault right there wouldn't even have been my fault so it looks like occasionally in the nether and then here in the end and I have been experiencing small lag and that honestly was not the worst that the lag could be but that does still get my heart rate up, holy cow. Oh. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, am I gonna hardly get any shulkers out of this one? So I got the elytra, but like no shulkers at all. This is such a bizarre end city. Oh, oh, well I, I guess I could do that. But I see cities so consistently and the other thing is that there's also such a high chance of accidentally looking at an enderman. That it's just more worth it to me to just keep it on and just take the risk like i've i've done this a few times before so i'm i'm just planning on not dying oh the dragon head is a decoration and it is also a redstone component like you can hook a redstone signal up to it and make it look like it's talking i've rarely seen it used in any interesting fashion but I mean, it is something that you can do. So I usually use it just for decoration. I don't know if you notice, but in the castle, there's probably 
a dozen in different locations just lying around. Okay, hopefully I did not look at any Endermen. Did this not load with any shulkers on the front? I shouldn't have been here before. Okay, let's get in here and see if I've even been here or not, because I doubt it, but... It always weirds me out when I don't see shulkers at the entrance, because there's usually two guarding it. And so it's like one of the signs that I've been to a place. Is there a shulker? No, I've, I've been here. I had to have been here. Did I just fly in the wrong direction? Yeah, those are gone. I, I flew to a city that I've been to already. Shoot. Okay, well that just wasted a little bit of time there. See, that's why I try and keep this going is because then I don't look so stupid when I accidentally fly to an in city that I've been to before. Literally like the one before the last one that I was on. I'm really just hoping to find a nice big city. Like if we can get a big one then we'll probably call it good after that one because there will be a ton of loot there. Why are we not finding anything? My wings are good for the moment. I think it would be kind of a fun game, like if you just had a bunch of ender pearls and did like some extreme, um, like parkour using ender pearls. You know, so like just trying to hit a very specific spot and stuff. But if I did that, I would make sure that I had no gear and that I'd used up all my levels because you'd definitely die in that situation. On N City. No. I'm getting a good bit of lag right now. I think this is the worst lag I've had on the server since I got the server set up. It might just need a fresh restart though, just because I've had it on for who knows how long now, right? So. finding any end cities this is like I don't know it's something that I would enjoy doing with another person because then at least you have someone helping watch your back and you can kind of branch out and find them and then meet up at the city and stuff you know because it's like so much area to cover just even when you're flying to try and find a city Far out am I? Oh, I'm headed back in the wrong direction again. Man, you get turned around so easy here. I am having to watch my rocket usage as well because when I get down to one stack left Is this one that I've been to? I'm not sure if this is the one that I just looted I think it might be Yes, no Actually, maybe not It's not a big one, that's for sure 
Yeah, I actually don't think I was here. Open, there's a shulker. Okay. Oh, so both of the shulkers that would have been in front because they couldn't be there. And it looks like they ended up spawning further up in. Because there normally aren't shulkers in those two rooms. And there you get a bite to eat real fast. Let's just start unleashing some arrows on these guys. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm actually hitting the projectiles with the arrows. And that's why you don't see them actually going anywhere. I'm hitting the, the shulker. Okay, go ahead and hit me with one so I can float on up in. Okay, I got three shulkers down here. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's see how lucky we got. Projectile protection four. <laughs> That's gonna be a very useful helmet now that I have so much of a lack of projectile protection. Like when I make some new armor, then that will be the one that I used for the base. I guess. Well, that was definitely worth it. Such a tiny little entity again, though. Okay, let's go ahead and take off and let's do... I just want one big entity. Like one reasonably sized one and then we'll call it good. Because I just... I should have enough shulkers at that point to be able to be comfortable for another while with all the big projects that I'm doing. Um, come on, come on, come on. I feel almost like I'm gambling right now, just hoping to find the... Oh, okay, good one. It's not big, but I think I can call it here. Because we'll just go ahead and loot... Oh, shoot, am I not gonna... What? Oh, you saw the lag! I was there! What? I was literally like, I managed to make that tiny, tiny little hole, and then the lag kicked me back. I was there, I was inside. <laughs> that was like some serious pro minecrafting right there, and then I totally just had the server lag, but it was like, uh uh. Okay, I have plenty of inventory space this time, so I can keep this dragon head at least. Holy cow, did you see that though? Like... <sighs> I was like... Edge of my seat right there, making that little flight there, and then it just is like, nope, psych. Okay, let's get rid of those, and more beetroot seeds. I really don't know why beetroot is such a thing for projectile protection for, but it's on armor that I'm not going to ever use. Oh, my. Well, at least I had it on stream, so you could see that I almost had it. Like, that was so close. It was stolen from me. Okay, well let's go ahead and go loot this one last city and then we'll head back to the safe base area. It's my safe base. Who needs a safe space when you got a safe base? Oh, is that... This might be underground-ish. Oh. 
Where'd you teleport to? So Shulkers can teleport and they do it occasionally so he teleported probably inside the building there. Every so often too they'll accidentally hit an Enderman and then the Enderman will... I think, if I remember right. I might actually be lying about that. I do know that there's situations though where you end up with like Shulkers fighting each other and stuff though. It's just not common at all. That guy teleported away too. What's up with these guys wanting to teleport away from me? Did that even give me a shulker shell? No. So I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, the Endermen, one of the interesting thing with them Come on. Hello. Thank you. The Endermen, they're actually saying words. Hey Parker, get down from there. I don't want you taking another tumble, bud. And we got at least one up here, right? Oh, did he miss me? Oh, I wanted him to hit me so I could float up to him. Where I have the projectile protection, it's just doing so little damage that I actually kind of find that useful so I don't have to climb. There we go. Because then I can just fly right up to him and finish him off. Easy peasy. He didn't drop a shell either. What's up with these shulkers not dropping shells? Okay, well you know what? But I go ahead and harvest some of these banners while we're here as well, because I don't often take the banners. But they look pretty cool. Wait, have I not? I guess I haven't harvested any ends and bricks since the update to the new server. Okay, let's go grab these then. The banners are something that I haven't been grabbing, but I probably should have. But they're also something that I can make. So if I have some reference banners, then maybe I'll just make some of my own. Okay, now there we go. That's what I was looking for was this little thing because I need to travel back through it to head back Back here. Oh No, oh no, no, no So I somehow spawned into the block because I was flying when I entered it Here let's go ahead and see if I can toss an ender pearl up there and it, there we go. I was thinking about disconnecting, but I was inside the block, so I don't know where I'm going to land, but luckily I had ender pearls. One circumstance where they are supremely useful. Anyway, so up in here, this is where you fight the end dragon originally. There's all these obelisks with these crystals on top that you got to shoot and destroy the crystals. There is some way, though, to use the dragon egg here to spawn the dragon back in. So I'll probably go ahead and give that a try relatively soon. I think that could be a good time. Take on the end dragon again. You get like 60,000 experience too. It is a butt ton of experience. Oh, thank you. Yeah, normally I wouldn't be able to use that solution, but because I had the ender pearl on me, then it kind of presented itself there as something that would be a good option. Okay, so I'm going to start clearing this stuff out to take to the new base. 
Some of it is going to just be stored away. Here is one that's just a normal one that's empty, just so I can move it over. The extra elytra we'll put in there, I guess. Um, this, the banners, the dragon head, sure. The end rods for sure. Some of the random end stone and stuff I'll just go ahead and put in here. The purple blocks and everything. I guess I had a purple block thing for this kind specifically, apparently. I'll grab these out. Yeah, so you can see a couple of elytra diamond gear. It's like it is very... There's a lot of stuff that you can get out of these places, I guess, right? Really, really good drops. Ring stand, I have a few in here, right? So I'll just put that back in. Oops, this one. Are these all, so these are all instant health potions from going in there. Do I have more? Oh yep, here we go. Normally if I run out of room but I don't have something that I have much of then I'll put it in the chest next to it and call it good. Looks like my ender pearl chest is full but we have some over there. Yeah, you can see how, how lazy I am or how consistent I am maybe. Just with the fact that I can do that and find the chest that has the excess in it. Okay, perfect. Those are totally cleared now. So we got enough to make 10 more shulker boxes. Yeah, so it's not, it's not absolutely incredible. It's not bad either though. Do I even have end rods stored in here somewhere? I guess maybe I'll just put that one random one there because I... Or no, I took the, the other ones. So yeah, maybe I should actually just take it then. Okay, let's see. Diamond gear, I'll go ahead and take with me. As well as the diamonds and all the gold, the elytra, the item frames. I'll take the saddles as well, even though I don't really need the saddles. I don't have many at the new base, so I might as well just use this as an opportunity to get a couple more over there. Push and broom stand. Do I still have a butt ton of chests in here? Enough. as well. Oh boy. So I'm actually gonna hold on to making them, or like before I make them, just because that's gonna fill up 10 spaces of inventory because it's not gonna be stackable. So let's see, these were the things that I put away to keep safe. Oh, I can put that shovel back in here, too. Okay, so let's put these away and that away. And one of those. Okay, now these are all stone to be transported back over. These are empty. This one was empty. Let's go ahead and grab the other couple empty ones here. And I'm going to go see how much stone is done. Since I've been in this area, I might as well grab some more finished stone because I had a bunch going over here. Holy crap, dude. What a productive day today. Like, I mean, it's kind of weird saying that about Minecraft being super productive, but this has actually been a really productive stream for me. I mean, a lot of that's due to Dictendo being absolutely insane and for some reason thinking that 
he needs to make such giant donations, but I'm not going to complain about it either, right? And I'm just happy that there's at least people out there that enjoy this channel, so... Where was I at? Is that one? Oh man, I guessed right the first time. So just a random thought. I don't know why, but I just thought about one specific area of Mexico that I was in, where we had a family that was relatively, well, pretty poor that we were working with. But they ran like a, a panaderia, which is like a bakery. And they made bread like biscuit thingies with meat inside of them that were actually pretty good. Like I, for being like something that was pre-cooked and just sitting there in a basket for like an hour or two, like who knows how long it was actually sitting outside. They actually usually tasted pretty good and everything, and they never made me sick or, you know, like other questionable Mexican food that you could find. Um, but this family, they also had like these Chinese beetles that it was like you're supposed to eat one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then and work your way up to like some ridiculous number and then work your way back down and the beetles were ones that they bred at a super fast rate and so you could basically um, like put in a piece of bread and have them breed exponentially and so that's what they would do is they just put in a piece of bread and keep them going so then like you could start out with just a few beetles and pretty soon you'd have you know enough when you got up to the crazy numbers like they'd breed faster than you could eat them kind of thing but I never understood why they ate the beetles like they said that it was some kind of health thing but Mexicans one of the things that I I guess you don't really realize is just how into like MLMs they are <laughs> I guess because <laughs> they would totally be doing like any kind of like health food so there's like the Oh, what is that tea called Herbalife? There are like a lot of people doing Herbalife and I don't know other random things that they thought would help them improve their health. And so you'd have like someone that's like not living a very healthy lifestyle and I think that this box of beetles is going to make up for it or something, but you know, I, I don't know why. I just thought of that family for a moment there and it was kind of a funny thing to think about, I guess. They did have some really sweet kids, so the kids were very, very sincere little children. It always made me mad when you'd have, like, families where the kids were obviously, like, could see that something was wrong with their parents, and so then they would try and help their parents out, and It'd be like the kid trying to parent the parent. Like trying to steer him towards going to church or like at least not drinking and stuff, you know. Hey, hey. <laughs> no. So same area, different family, but a slightly different town. So the, the town that I was thinking of was one called Tenancingo. And it was an interesting town. Like there were a lot of, like a really large number of Catholics there. And they had like some really big churches and stuff in the center of town. So they had these four big cathedrals that actually formed like the shape of a cross. And some other interesting little things. They also had this religious kind of hood thingy that looked just like a Ku Klux Klan member. <laughs> that was kind of an interesting sight, I guess. Um, okay, where did I have? Okay, so I had the extra shulkers over here. You know what? I should grab a couple of empty ones to put stuff in. Let's see if we can just put these away as well. Anyway, yeah, so they had like these Ku Klux Klan looking hoods. 
in for one of the festivals and they also did some stuff that I had never seen before here in the US like I think they also do the same kind of thing in the Philippines where on Holy Week then they actually crucify someone um, so trying to make them um, you know kind of like how Jesus was crucified but they would have someone that had to be like abstinent from alcohol and other things and try and live a holy life for like a year leading up to it and they'd grow out their hair and everything and but yeah then they in certain places they would actually crucify him I know it, it, it's weird stuff but anyway so there were just some of those things though that just kind of blew my mind when I got to Mexico because it was just such an unusual thing my mind but I, I think in the Philippines they're actually even more hardcore than Mexico is um, anyway so yeah you have some random stuff like that and I, I don't know why I'm telling you all these random things but so this town was an interesting one and it was actually known for having this gigantic flower market that was like the largest in Mexico and so all the way around the city for miles and miles like if you looked out from they actually had this they called it Cristo Rey that was kind of like a Rio de Janeiro looking Cristo statue or Christ statue with like his arms outstretched and stuff that was like four stories tall or something you know but anyway also a pain in the butt to climb that thing had like I don't remember how many thousands of steps to climb but we were in very very good shape like that's probably the best shape of my life because we were locking like 10 hours a day minimum you know just walking 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 everywhere and yeah climbing that Cristo Rey thing like the however many thousands of steps it was it took a while and it would actually get you breathing pretty hard because it was like basically climbing straight up a very steep mountain but anyway so there's this other family that lives not in Tenancingo, but a little town outside of Tenancingo. And I don't remember the specific name of the town. Uh, there were there were a bunch of them. It was one of the Indian kind of names, though. Because there was Akambai that was a little further down. And... Zumbalakan was also further down, but I think it started with like an Ath. I know it wasn't Athlathlauka or Athlathlauka or anything like that, but it was. Was it Athlathlauka? I don't know. It was, it was a really interesting name. Anyway, but it was also one of the towns where most of the people worked in these flower markets. And they were like the people that were out cutting the flowers and stuff. And I mean, these people, they worked their butts off and they made like $8 a week if they were lucky. Which I mean, in Mexico, you could live on that, but it was pretty poor even by Mexican standards, right? So, but these were like the people that never finished school, that started working when they were super young. And so this one family in particular, it was... Um, a grandma and her daughter that live next to each other and the grandma had two sons living with her still that she was taking care of one of them actually wasn't her it was the daughters but the daughter got pregnant when she was like 12 and so the grandma basically took on caring for this kid um, and then the daughter at that point had a husband they'd recently gotten married a little bit before I got there and they had another four kids so I think she was only like 27 or 28 and they already had four kids you know and the dad was I think he was about the same age and he was already going gray from like all the super hard work that he's doing bent over cutting flowers all day but anyway one day it rained and in this area when it rained, then there were these certain bugs that would kind of come out from wherever they'd been hiding. 
and they would move up under the bottom sides of some larger leaves um, to get out of the rain kind of thing. So up off the ground under the leaves. And so these people just knew where these bugs, like what kind of bushes to look for and stuff. And the bugs were probably the size, like maybe an inch long. And they have like, if you know Sid from Ice Age, then they had eyes kind of like Sid where they were like on these little stub thingies that were further out from their head, so they weren't on their head. But it was some kind of beetle. I, I honestly don't know the name of it at all. And I don't know if they even knew the name of it. It was just something that they knew. And so what they would do though is the kids, when it rained, they would go run out into the hills and go collect these bugs from under the leaves and stuff. And they would come back and like the kids, like it was the funniest sight seeing these little kids, like one girl in particular was maybe only like nine or 10. And she just was beaming, having like her shirt clear full of these bugs coming on into her family, right? And so what they would do is then you just drop the bugs in the water and they couldn't swim and so they would drown. And then once they were, you know, belly up, drowned, whatever, then they just put in a little bit of oil in a pan and saute them with a little bit of salt and lime and then eat them. And they did not want to share them. Like, <laughs> that was another funny thing too. I mean, they were poor, but they it was like a, a treat to them or something, you know, so they didn't even want to share. Anyway. So yeah, random, random stuff. I mean, I don't know, I could talk about Mexico for a long time with all the different things that we saw there. Some of them are, I mean, when I got in the city, that was pretty rough. Like I had some areas where, let's just say in one of the areas there were, um, we had an area, oops, why do I have poppies on me? We had one area that we went through, they have colonias, which is kind of like a suburb or a, I don't know, like it's, I don't know what you'd call it, like a neighborhood maybe? To where it's like, you know, maybe a couple miles long, mile wide, whatever, that's just like this little district and they would use it for like for their melon stuff. So you'd have like Colonia, Molinito, and which is Little Windmill. Um, and that's within the municipality, like the actual town, right? And so in the Molinito when I was there, the Molinito, um, in one of these colonias, we had five of them that we worked in. Uh, you need to go walk your dog? Okay. Yeah, I'll just wrap this up then. Anyway, so one colonia, one street in that colonia, there were ten murders by Thursday of one week on just that street. So, I mean, some of the areas were really ugly. The rural communities, though, that were out in the state of Mexico where I was at, those are actually really nice, and there's a lot of beautiful country there. It's just sad that they have as many problems as they do. Okay, well, I will see you in a little bit then there. Groovehagen, I'm going to just keep on making some more of these flowers so we can get some serious carpeting done in the tunnels. Whoever else is watching, I don't, I, I can't tell. It looks like there may be one other person watching than Groovehawk and, and the normal crowd, but this type of problems, yeah. You know, they have some pretty, pretty serious problems in Mexico. Anyway. Yeah, out in the countryside though, they'd have like these big beautiful fields of corn and stuff and like these beautiful mountains and everything. And it was sad because they didn't really take care of it all the time. So you'd like see signs that was like no littering, like 5,000 peso fine. And underneath it there would be like fields of garbage. 
and it was almost like they were purposely littering in that area and dumping all the trash there and stuff like so that was yeah not something that I exactly liked too much was that you'd have this beautiful country and then like a whole hillside of trash but I don't know some of the areas were just absolutely beautiful though I don't know, it's like so much, like I came from a high plateau desert, is what I grew up in. So it was, you know, just dry and high altitude, so we'd still get snow in the winter and stuff. But more because of the elevation than anything. Um, and so when I got to Mexico, the amount of water that they had was absolutely incredible sometimes. Oh, thank you for the donation there, Groovagen. So occasionally we'd be out working, and in the monsoon season, so probably like June to July to sometimes pushing into early August, it seemed, then there would just be these massive afternoon thunderstorms. Not thunderstorms, but just like monsoons maybe I guess like because it is like the monsoon season whatever where it would just dump all kinds of water like crazy amounts of water that I had never seen anything on that scale before so one particular day we were walking down the street and it started to rain and pretty soon we were up to um, up above our sock levels, probably about eight inches of water just on the road. And there's no way to avoid it, so you just ended up just, you know, dealing with it and walking in the water. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't nice water either. This is like nasty water with trash and gunk running in it. And occasionally it would also rain so hard that your umbrella instead of keeping you dry the rain would be so big and so hard when it hit the umbrella that you just get a finer mist burst through the umbrella umbrella so the umbrella would keep you from getting totally soaked but you'd get a fine misting the entire time it rained <laughs> I had one time that I was walking with this guy and I had my umbrella out and he had out an umbrella and he just decided like screw it I'm already completely soaked and he put away his umbrella and we were walking up some stairs that just happened to be underneath the roadway and the roadway did not have proper drainage so it had about a foot of water that had built up along the curb there and so when a car passed by then it dumped like probably five gallons of just nasty water right over his head and totally soaked him. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's so gross. And I, I was spared because at least I had my umbrella, so it, you know, blocked most of the water, the large majority of the water, but oh, the nastiness of some of that stuff, like the dirty water. And, Yeah, you'd have two pairs of shoes though, and you would take out one pair of shoes, they'd totally get soaked, and so then you'd leave them to dry, and wear your other pair, and pretty soon you wouldn't have any, any shoes at all that were anywhere dry, but, um, I don't know, Mexico in general though, Great food, a lot of really good people, really bad social system. Like, they did not have good police, they did not have a good presence when I was there, it was under Peña Nieto. I don't know if it's any better under the Lopez Obrador guy that they just elected, but... Yeah, so it was just a mess in general, the cops were totally ineffective, at least in the areas that I was in. Like, Mexican police were just about as much of a joke as Native American police. Like, I mean, I grew up near the res, and the the Navajo police did, like, hardly anything. And the Mexican police, like, they 
did just about the same. They did basically nothing. I even watched a guy get robbed in front of a cop truck with like probably 15 officers or something there, you know. They didn't even move. Didn't even try to help the guy. They totally watched him get robbed right in front of him. And they just stood there. But it was an area where, you know, there were cop killers and cops would be killed if they tried to do anything. But, I mean, just the fact that it got to that point that the criminals were able to scare the cops enough to just take advantage of them and people like that, that they weren't even worried about the cops seeing them commit a crime. That really said something. How it was that the guy got robbed is... There is a black Mustang, which in Mexico, a black Mustang is also unusual. So you know that it's probably some kind of... Like this area was where there was a lot of narcos, like a lot of the drug dealers. And so you knew that it probably wasn't a legitimately earned Mustang that they were driving. Or at least the money for it wasn't, you know, from working a normal job. Anyway, but yeah, so this black Mustang, they have what they call tianguis, which are like kind of like a farmer's market, like these open air markets. And they would sell everything there. There'd be candy, food, electronics, whatever you want. But this one, the guy just happened to have an electronics place. And he was setting out his gear, and he had like some DVD players and stuff, and some satellite dishes or whatever. Um, that people could install themselves kind of thing. But anyway, so the Mustang drove up and the guy in the passenger seat just reached out, grabbed like a DVD player or something that's probably, you know, who knows how many hundreds of pesos. And then they drove off and the store owner was just like running after the car, throwing rocks and stuff, but... I mean, the cops that were there, that were literally next to the guy, like they were within 10 feet of the guy getting robbed when he got robbed. And they just sat there, they didn't bother getting in their truck trying to follow the person or anything, just, just let it happen. I don't know, other times there were kind of fun things that happened though, like... I mean, occasionally you'd get like these big parties that they would have in the street and they would literally just put it right in the street they wouldn't even you know like it totally block off traffic they just set up a giant tent have food and games and like a little mini carnival thing and stuff and yeah they it was literally right in the street though it'd be like if you went out and decided that you wanted to have a party and that was the only place that was flat and open and so you went and did that and the cars just have to figure it out, right? Oh boy. Look who's gotten into his elephants. Okay, well I might have to go ahead and call it after this set for the flowers. Because this is just really starting to slow down the server. I don't know. It's like such a weird thing though, because Mexico in general, like I saw some awesome stuff, saw some horrible stuff, and so I have like super mixed feelings about it. It's like, in one light I love it, in the other light I, I really, really, really dislike it. Like I wouldn't go so far as to say that I hate it, but... I mean, getting robbed and having guns pointed at you, stuff like that is not fun at all. It's a very stressful thing. And just having that be part of a normal day is like, I don't know how people could live like that. Because there were areas where that happened, like, you know, you'd lose all your identification because they just robbed the little bus that you were traveling in. happened to more than one person that I knew on what was almost like a weekly basis in some parts. 
This is bad. It's bad, bad, bad. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab some of these. We'll just take it back with us to the thing since we're not going to fill out all the all the stuff here at all. show. It's extremely strange. But it's on BBS and so it's one of the ones that Parker watches. Am I all the way up to where I have the 2000? I didn't even look at that but I don't even know how to check that though. Yeah, I really don't know. I'll have to look at that after the stream. Oh, excuse me. Just because I might actually be pretty close to at least being able to lock in 2000 Lino to try and do the verified or whatever user, whatever it is. I don't remember the exact wording, I'll have to look at it again, but it's, there's like a partner progression with DLive, and the more you, like, so you lock in stuff, you have to get up to 300 followers, which is going to take a while still, and that's pretty apparent, right, but, anyway, so if I can get that, going, then I can at least lock in the Lino if I get up to 2,000. And because of Ducktendo, then I'm going to be there way, 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 way sooner than I ever thought I was going to be. Like, I don't know what possessed him to want to donate that much to me. I'm not going to complain about it. But it is like something that I was thinking was going to be a really slow burn kind of thing, you know? Like that I'd just be streaming for who knows how long, maybe it would happen, maybe it wouldn't. Wasn't going to set my heart on it happening though, you know. And apparently I've just got some really good followers that are really awesome people and are willing to be generous, so. This is probably going to be way too many dandelions. I, no, I'm just going to put these back. Let's see, what do I... I should actually see what... I'm going to look at the suspicious stew and see what dandelions do in that. Saturation. Oh, for only 0.3 seconds. Oxide Daisy gives you regeneration, that's a good one. And the cornflower is a jump boost. So we'll have to try out the cornflower. Here, let's make just a couple of them. I have all the stuff that I need right here. There's a couple of cornflowers in here. And where's the bowls? Awesome. Can I make it just in here? I think I probably can, right? Oh yeah, suspicious. Let's see how high this makes it so I can jump. That's not super long, but that's at least long enough to help you get off the ground a little bit. So another thing that I can think about is to save slightly, slightly on rockets. It would probably be useful to try and figure out how to make a launcher for when I'm flying with Elytra to get me off the ground. So I'm going to have to look at how to do that as well. Okay, what time is it? 
I'm trying to think of I think my wife actually will be getting home soon. Let's see. Because I might go ahead and end the stream here in a little bit since I've been going for a little while and I need to check on some other stuff and do some other things while she gets off it too. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to check my phone real fast. stuff away. I have two more empty shulkers of stuff that I can take back. Anything else I've been missing? Is there anything that you guys can think of? I'm just trying to think of if there's anything that I really need that I have here that I don't really have there. I mean, I could take some of that extra coal put back into some of the systems which I don't really need it. Look at all these furnaces. Maybe I'll grab some more of these because I... Who knows why I have so many of them, but I might as well make a big furnace array. And... Then let's just do this. So because I'm going through so many rockets, I'll just go ahead and make some more. To take with me. Oops, no, let's put these in the orange one and we'll put only rockets in the red one. So if I go ahead and just grab all that I can and put them in, then we'll just fill this back up with what I can't put in. But look at that. Awesome. Okay, and gunpowder. Do I have gunpowder over here still? I basically used it all up, holy cow. Okay, looks like I need to take this paper on over. And a couple of empty shulkers, looks like. One, two. Okay, we'll just fill these all the way full with rockets and then we'll know that we have the right amount. Excuse me. Yeah, I don't I don't know why I am burping so much today. I'm sorry about that guys. Like seriously weird stuff going on, but okay, let's see here. I'll see here. Yes, Parker. Parker's just sitting at my feet doing who knows what. a funny little guy. Weird. Definitely weird, but funny. No, I'm just kidding, all little kids are weird. Clearing out 
a lot of this gunpowder. Might just have to eventually dispose of a lot of the random stuff that I have in here. Sort through it again. It's just that I, I'm definitely not going to do that on stream because it's hours of just moving items. Which is not exactly compelling gameplay. I mean, this is kind of really pushing it as well. I left some more paper over here. Yeah, there's a couple of stacks there. No more there. Okay. Let's hurry and make these real fast. And then I'll go check one other little area nearby that probably has some paper. Did I have gunpowder over here? I did. These corner ones I kind of always miss because they're kind of hidden in the corner. Isn't it brilliant? Let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I need to get two more full ones. and bubbles so I'm, I can hear that in the background again it's another one of those kids shows that's like it's a Jim Henson one so you think that it would be decent but I actually don't think it's that amazing of a kids show like it's trying to help promote oceans and like reefs and help kids get to know about animals and how to take care of the oceans and stuff so it's got a good point to it but it's one of those shows where they do like the same song every single episode and instead of it just being one song there's multiple songs that they do every episode and so eventually you just get to the point where you're like okay like are you actually even working to make new content or is this just you i don't know like i feel like repetition for kids is good but I feel like they can change it up just a little bit in between, right? So, Peg Plus Cat is another show that has a lot of repetition. Basically, there's always a big problem. They always start freaking out, and then they always end up solving the problem. And so they do the same kind of tropes every single episode. Like, you could probably put it down as like a bad... Know, I'm sure you guys have probably seen like those bad descriptions of movies. Like if you did that, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between different episodes of Pick Plus Cat. You really wouldn't. But on the other end, at least when they do that, then they like change up the music. Like they do it in a different time or slightly different people singing it or a different way of singing it. Like, and so it's like it's enough that you can recognize it, but it's not so much that it's just a blatant, straight up copy of what they just did last episode every single time kind of thing. And they also have more episodes so it doesn't repeat the episodes as much either. Oh yeah, are you getting all those out? Okay, well... I know that I, I said I'd be working on the nether tunnel again, and apparently this whole episode was just set up for the nether tunnel. So technically, I mean, I'm working on it because I'm doing all the setup for it, but... I just wish at this point that I would have actually done more in it, so I think we'll end by getting some of the actual tunnel done for like the last 15, 20 minutes of the stream here and then we'll 
like I'll just have to work more off camera or off stream again because that's another one of those things is that it's just there's so much that I'm going to be doing that I'm going to be in, ending up doing a lot of it off stream just because there's I mean you guys would have like 20 hours of the same exact thing if I did it all on stream and that would drive me nuts because it's Minecraft is a lot easier for me when I have something that I can listen to instead of just myself talking so which apparently I've been pretty good at because I'm just talking to myself a lot lately but oh welcome back there Groovehagen um as a recap you did not miss anything Nothing interesting happened. I've just been making some more rockets, doing some more preparatory kind of stuff. I think I'll actually call it good there for the rockets, actually. Anyway. So yeah, I'm just getting a few little things set up. Yep, yeah, I, I literally just finished making the rockets that I needed. I, I wanted to get to where I had a good amount at the new base as well stored up and I was replenishing my supplies here at this end oh I'm at the, the pyramid base yeah you should be able to see that mm -hmm. yep the pyramid I'm, I'm responding to it and I know you're going to type in the chat like oh okay yeah I see now or something I saw now. <laughs> See, called it. Just because of that little delay there. Okay, well, let's take these then. So I just went ahead and filled those up with extra rockets and stuff. And now I'm going to start grabbing a lot of the shulkers here. So we'll make sure that we grab any shulkers. Oh, you know what? We should get a few more empty shulkers real quick, too. Because now that I've spent some more time here, I probably have some more smooth stone ready. Yeah, there's at least a few stacks here to grab super fast, so... Probably not going to use most of these shulkers, but just to have enough right here. I'm just trying to collect as much as I can and I knew that I'd be spending time here so that's the main reason why I even ended up using these furnace like this furnace array or whatever you'd call it I'm gonna build a large one at the at the new base so because now that like I uh, you probably didn't see it but Almost all of the furnaces there are full of XP now, which means that I'm going to start generating just a ton of extra bamboo. And so that extra bamboo, I think I'm going to go ahead and make the option to route it, route, root, I don't know, to send it down into, um, into a large furnace system that's just underneath the cactus farm that I'll be building that will, I want to make one that's like super fast, super efficient. Just kind of go crazy. Anyway. Yeah, the amount of resources that I'm doing, then I really need to just spend all the time I can here doing stuff as efficiently as possible. So anyway, I was kind of saying, Groovehagen, I think I will be working for about another 15 minutes until about 2 p.m. my time, and then calling it good with the stream today because I have a few other things that I need to get done.
but we'll go ahead and do a little bit more work on that nether tunnel because I mean I named the episode the nether tunnel part 2 or something in the nether highway part 2 and I've like not spent any time there at all right <laughs> so I, I think I need to go spend a little time working on that I mean I've, I've been doing a lot of prep work for it right I mean, you've seen all that, that I've been putting a ton of preparation into everything, but... Oh, thank you for the ice cream again, dude. Oh, excuse me. I don't know why I'm, like, so... I don't know. I just had a weird stomach today. Maybe that's how I put it. Okay, let's see. Which one was the partially empty one? This one? Let's grab that out and put it back in. And you know what? Maybe I should grab some other stuff too. Like I... Oh, no, I do have pumpkins though. Okay, let's grab some carved pumpkins. And we'll go grab some snow real fast. So that I can make a snow golem there at the new base. Or a couple of them. I have seen some other interesting things, like apparently you can make a thing to load the nether by putting a monster in a cage and making a snow golem just constantly miss it and have it instead go through another portal and then that will get you, get you some stuff. So, kind of a weird thought, you know, that you can load the nether by just having a, a mob throw stuff into it, I guess. Okay, let's see anything empty. Okay, I'm going to start just grabbing stuff that has stuff in it. Oops. I didn't mean to grab that one empty shulker. Okay, does that... Oh, and that leaves me with a few here. That's good if I have extras here. Okay. Let's go ahead and make a trek all the way down to the new base then. And I do have extra rockets there. Uh, yes, I started the audiobook last night. I'm about a third of the way through the first book. So I don't know how long I was listening to it for, but... I did put in a good amount of time yesterday listening to that when I was doing all of this portion of the tunnel that I'm flying through now, actually. So you can see how much work I've, I've put into it. Like I did these on the top here, because if you remember, I had the pattern of the half slab in the middle to give it kind of a tiny bit of an arched feel. And so I was just going all the way down on these. And the original nether tunnel that was flyable is actually behind us now. So this is all the new territory. And I actually made it a good portion of the way into it. So I'm just going to be placing blocks forever. But Well, that's good. It has been really compelling riding so far. Like... I mean, I, I kind of said this a little bit earlier, but I haven't really understood exactly where the author was trying to go with the story. Because I guess it hasn't been like they've revealed any, um, like, super big villain or something that they have to defeat. It's been more like just this wizard try trying to take care of the tortoise, or tortoise, not tortoise. <laughs> wizard trying to care for his tortoise. That sounds like the most compelling book you could possibly write. Anyway. Yeah, so, but it's like at the same time I... Okay, there's some lag again. At the same time it's also like to where I'm not wanting to put it down either. I'll you know, not put it down, but like it is very interesting. No, maybe maybe we'll have to write a book about the wizard and the tortoise. I mean, all you'd have to do is make it a talking tortoise, 
Oh, there is a, yeah, it is a, like the world turtle or whatever thing, right? Oh. Okay. So I know I said I was going to work on it, but then it's like actually I need to drop some of this off so I don't have just a bunch of stuff here on me. empty <laughs> Amazingly famous Google them. I'll have to Google them. Yeah, I, I trust you that they're I think it's more that I lived under a rock than anything much better than Harry Potter. Yeah, well, I, I don't think J.K. Rowling is making that anything difficult anymore, too, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know I keep on ripping on her on stream, but it's like, it's just so frustrating, the crap that she's pulled with the whole Harry Potter universe lately. The whole HBO series about one of the books. Now, are they all continuous, or are they just all in the same universe? Because that's another thing that I've been curious about, is whether or not they're... Oh, Pablo? Oh, that's interesting. Um, one of the guys that I know in Mexico is apparently waving at me, so I'll have to... It's been a while since I've talked to him. He's a big um, Fire Emblem nerd. I don't know if you've played Fire Emblem. That is one of the best games as far as cinematics and... I don't know, like, if you like strategy, I feel like it had some really awesome strategy, too. But, yeah, Fire Emblem was just awesome in general. I really loved Fire Emblem. Um, both the Game Boy and I have Radiant Dawn for the Wii, and I want to get the new one that's coming out on the Switch. And I have not played all of the series, either. but I haven't really told many people about the fact that I've even been streaming. Like, I haven't told, like, any family, really. Except for very few family members individually. Anyway, um, no, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this extra stuff in here. Go ahead and put the chests and the chokers there, the extra armor, and I can't believe we got such a good pick too, like that's just awesome. That, um, about the stream, yeah, I haven't really told, I don't know, like I, I don't know, the family dynamics kind of changed too, quite a bit thousand dollars a month. I'll have to do that if that ever happens. Come out of the streaming closet. <laughs> it's like, Dad, I have I have something to tell you. And he's just like, oh no. Like, don't tell me there's something else going on in your life that's crazy. And it's like, actually, it's a good thing. Yeah, I, I would like to do that. I don't know if it's ever going to happen. I know that my wife is definitely happier with me though that I've at least started to make some progress with it and it's not a total waste of time, but... Because that was, I mean, that's the risk that you run when you're streaming too, I guess, is that you just totally flop and don't get anywhere at all. Oh, well, luckily I've been lucky with like Ducktendo, my mini Mr. Beast, and his crazy generous donations. Now I just have to hit that 200 followers. I, 
That's so frustrating to me that... Hey, wait. I should have had two shulkers of green concrete. Did I leave a shulker of green concrete somewhere? I could have sworn I had a second shulker because I did two full shulkers last night. I'm just going to call him my mini Mr. Beast because that's what I feel like Mr. Beast does is he goes and joins some random stream and then donates however many thousands of dollars to it and about gives the person a heart attack every single time. I keep losing them. Oh, followers? Or losing what? Because if you're talking about losing followers, I might have lost a few, but I don't know if I'm actually... I, I just don't know what's consistent in DLive at all. Because it seems like on Facebook or YouTube it's pretty rare for people to unsubscribe, but I don't know about DLive at all. Oh no, the chess. Okay. Yeah, I... I keep on losing them. I don't know why. Like I literally had an extra thing of green concrete that now we're going to have to go find somewhere. Oh well. I guess I'll be making more later and I'll go find it somewhere. Probably at the fish farm or something, right? the guardian farm who knows like i have extra stuff up there too i'll have to remember about these chests i didn't anyway okay let's actually go do a tiny little bit of work on this thing now that i'm pushing it so late because i keep on losing stuff at least going to get some of this end decorated so I can work from both ends and maybe we'll finally make it together in the middle eventually you know what I probably should grab some more and just store them here in the entrance as well okay well, let's just get this I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and start placing some of the... No, they're not. Okay. I know this jumping is going to drive you mad. Actually, technically, you know what? The green is going to go the entire distance. At least one tall, right? So if I grab the green concrete, then I should be able to just to make a layer along the bottom of green concrete and just build off of that. Now I might have to change it at the end there because of the portal and how that's all going to work out. But let's see if this will speed things up a bit. Because any way that I can get this to speed up, like if I can save a few seconds in placing a stack of blocks, it's going to add up to quite a few minutes on as big of a project as this is. Yeah, the shulkers. I don't know why I'm so bad. I, I used to not be so bad at losing shulkers all the time, but apparently I've just lost my mind and just keep on forgetting things entirely whenever I stream. start a pigment war on this end because they're already fighting me on the other end all the time but for some reason they just always want to stand directly in the way of where you need to build I mean there's this entire walkway and look he's going to go stand right there okay well, 42 is what I want to go down to I believe 
Not for any particular reason, just to kind of keep things consistent, I guess. Oh, dude, don't do it. Oh, you mean killing the pigment, okay. I thought you, because you said good idea and then said no dude, and it was like, wait, are you retracting that? You want me to kill the pigment? But never mind, it, it's two separate things. Good idea with the concrete, bad idea with killing pigment. Yeah, well once I get enough con er, carpet down, then they're not even going to be able to spawn anymore. And I'll just be able to ride them off entirely, not even worry about them. Okay, tiny bit longer. <laughs> yeah, they are very annoying. It's about 2 o'clock though, and I said that that's how long I was going to go for, so... We'll do a tad bit longer, because I feel bad, like... Really, one block off. Okay. I almost guessed that correctly for the distance, so you gotta give me props for that, right? That I guessed within one block of the amount that I needed to get that. But... Anyway, so I'll just be doing this for a while, so... I mean, you watched it last night, I still have the dice, so I'm still gonna do the randomized stuff. Um, the biggest thing is just getting one block. Anyway, the biggest thing is just getting all these put on and out. How far out does that need to go actually though? Let's go to there, to there, and then we're good on that. That's not too bad. I could get going reasonably fast with that. Because once I get... So the, the big thing is just getting those ones down. Once I get it to that point, like it is now, then it really moves so much faster. Because then it's just, you know, just doing my roll. Oh, that was a really bad roll. Two fives and two sixes. Going for randomness and not getting anything random at all. Here we go, though. Four, two, four, five, one. So I do want to start it a little ways away from the end there. But let's do, let's give it one space. So four. We'll do the th three here. Two. Four, five, and then one. I'll just pull it all the way down. So yeah, once you get to this point, you can see how much faster that goes just placing the walls in. We'll just leave this one normal for now, I guess. Mildly annoying like the reddit. Oh yeah. Oh another. Okay I'm going to reroll one of those because it's just a bad number. Okay so this one is going to be a two wide one. That's three, one. And it actually looks okay on the diagonal as well, which I'm happy about. 
So even though it is slightly awkward, like it's not super, super awkward. Okay, one. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Like even when it's going around corners, then it still actually works out okay. And it's not like super crazy off or anything. Once you get moving, then it really blends together even better. So we'll do this as the last one. 5, 1, 2, 1, 1. Let's re-roll that final one. 2, I'm not going to do that. 3. Okay. So 5. It's like trying to keep it random like this can actually make it seem a little bit funky on occasion, right? Now, just as long as I don't get too many rolls where I have a few of the same kind, because that really makes it look bad. But here we go. Alright, that was supposed to be a three though, right on the end there. Actually, when a couple short here. Okay, anyway. So yeah, we'll get this going, and I'm just going to go all the way down. After I get the walls done, I think I'll do the ceiling, and then the final thing will just be all the carpet. So for the time being, though, I guess I'm going to go ahead and call this the stream. Just because I need to get going and doing some other stuff with my day here, but great stream today, right? I mean, I this has been awesome. I'm super grateful for all the support, and yeah, I'm gonna keep on making sure that I get everything backed up onto YouTube as well, so you can watch anything that you missed. But thanks for being here. I will see you later, and I hope you have a good rest of your day or a good evening for you there groove hogging because it's like nighttime now right so anyway i'll see you later Bye.